Hey guys, it's time for the new video, Trumpovsky attack. d4, knight f6, and bishop g5. What a great move to avoid all those Indian defenses, such as King's Indian, Brunfeld, Nimzo, and many, many more. So with the second move, bishop g5, you're just intending to take on f6, and for the rest of the game, to play... Uh, for a better pawn structure and you know you would just be happy to trade off pieces most of the time and play a tiny bit better middle games although most of these indian guys especially grunfeld guys and king's indian players they like to avoid bishop f6 by playing knight e4 when they play and jump with this knight on e4 uh, they just harass this bishop on g5 and most of the theoretical moves and games so far uh, were played with either bishop g4 or bishop bishop h4 or bishop f4. Although, just for you, in this lecture, I, just, I decided to show you h4. That's a specialty that I was using with a great uh, success in, in the past uh, in my bullet and blitz games. Uh, I had more than 75% of the wins with this one. And I like it a lot. Many of these guys call it Raptor attack, uh, but I like it a lot more uh, to, to call it to a great friend of mine, ex world junior champion, Grandmaster Igor Miladinovic from Serbia. That guy has an amazing score with this line, played more than 30 games with a score of 80%. That really sounds awesome. Along with him, Richard Ruppert, the guy who recently got in the top 10 in the world, uh, best Serbian player for the past 20 years, uh, Ivan Ishevic, has been using this with uh, great success. And finally, the guy, thanks to whom, and Miladinovic uh, Trompovsky became so popular, Julian Hodgson. So after h4, what's the point? Uh, the point is, if they take on g5, you just recapture by pawn and threaten g6. You always should unleash the kingside action with g6 by sacking this pawn, and afterwards, uh, you just go with a3, bishop d3, uh, going after the g6 weakness and possibly weak light squares around the king. One of the main moves in the system is c5. So when they go with c5, you just capture on c5. That's once again uh, quite an interesting line because they have so many options. You should never be afraid of knight takes g5, h takes g5 because next move should be g6 no matter what. Uh, lots of guys like to give check to immediately get a pawn back where you play knight e2 and uh, they have to remove the knight before they take on c5. So if they take, you just take by queen and afterwards uh, played a kind of a nice Sicilian game with a better development with VD4, long castles, knight f3, and so on. But when they capture on g5, you play h takes g5, and they go queen c5. Here, a specialty could come. Uh, I like g6, once again, uh, going for the action on the king's side by sacking this pawn, opening the h file, weakening on the light squares, creating double pawns, and after f takes g6, a3. Very interesting line. Uh, Miladinovic uh, forced in one of his games by playing rook to h4. And now you just uh, threaten this very interesting rook c4 to win the game on the spot because the rook on c the bishop on c8 is hanging. Also, um, I remember beating up one of my students, Eric Kurtz, in this variation where he captured on g5. I played knight g on f3, and then in the mutual dancing of uh, these knights, actually. Uh, afterwards in the middle game and uh, playing this rook along the fourth rank in the very early stage of the game I just managed to win a fairly nice and easy game so just like you see lots of interesting possibilities uh, but most of these guys like to do knight a6 I played against the system many times and those who play knight a6 they would like to bring the a pawn back by taking on c5 by a6 knight well they just want to uh, get rid of the dark square bishop which could be annoying piece because it either stops e6 or uh, provokes h6 which is further weakening by black so we go with the queen d4 we kind of threaten uh, this knight on e4 
and force them to take in in which case once again we would first of all defend this pawn for the time being and we would just threaten g6 so when they play knight a c5 Igor Miladinovich uh, and his uh, creation is the following knight c3 move what a great move so he's now challenging this knight on e4 and when black takes you now take on c5 quite an interesting moment once again because knight is in the middle of nowhere has to go back to e4 and he brings his queen back to d5 once again the knight on e4 is hanging and once again black has to do something if they go back knight f6 you just take and have a lot better structure so most of these guys in the past captured on g5 h takes g5 which i always enjoy in these positions and now you threaten very nasty g6 that's why most of the uh, players with the black they just went with queen b6 a logical move you prevent g6 which is uh, one of the highlights of this opening and also you threaten the pawn on b2 when you play long castle you just sack the pawn on f2 and you don't care about it and that's a specialty about this line so whenever i played my games uh, and one of my games went even against one of the best serbian guys in blitz ivic here uh, they all captured on f2 and uh, doesn't seem like an obvious compensation you just have to admit First of all, they do have the bishop here. They're up a pawn, and we got a broken pawn structure. The only thing that we have at the moment is a little bit better activity, and that's it. Here, uh, Miladinovic, in his games against Talbi and Chatalbashev, played both rook to h3. I also played it a couple of times in my uh, bullet and blitz games, but mostly blitz, and won all my games. So, what's the point of this rook h3? It's a specialty. I would give it two exclam marks and I would call this move uh, quite spectacular. So, they can't play anything but bringing the queen back to b6 or just playing e6. What happens if they just go with queen takes g1? You absolutely give up this knight. And an interesting line happens now most of the guys think that you should go with some e3 and trap the queen no believe it or not this is the point of the rook on h3 you play rook c3 and no one can stop rook d7 followed by queen d7 checkmate what a beautiful trick so when they go with a6 you just bring your queen back to d2 i played my game and won against evich by playing queen to d3 so they just have to go with bishop e7 and you play knight f3. Uh, of course, uh, with these moves, you just save uh, the knight on g1. You just overprotect the pawn on g5, but we absolutely don't care about any material. After queen c5, we just go with e4. Uh, what I like about Miladinovic's games in Trompovsky attack was his always uh, great creativity and sense for action and tactics. In this game, he played e4. And he just wants to push this pawn up to e5, play bishop d3, and absolutely kill black on the king's side and on, uh, on the h7 square. Absolutely, the most logical move is d6. And once again, a great action by white, e5. With this pawn break and with this second pawn sec, uh, what is, you once again don't see why would he play something like this because when he plays d takes e5 there's nothing obvious and once again a uh, great rook lifting with a rook on h4 what's so special about this uh, rook h4 thing you just threaten a rook c4 you just threaten um, afterwards a rook c8 followed by queen d7 and here i chose two games for you today Miladinovic Talbi uh, played in uh, Algeria uh, back to 2015. I believe that uh, we were together in that tournament. And uh, afterwards, uh, when he analyzed this game uh, with me, I was more than amazed with the quality and uh, with an amazing tactics that is going to happen now. So, black played b5 to prevent rook c4. 
White played b4, kicking this queen away and somehow hoping to get a pawn back on b5. Queen b6, and Mladenovic got a first pawn back. The critical thing happens after h6, because it looks like black just wants to take on g5, and or uh, otherwise he's just pinning this rook on h4. Uh, a crazy move happened now. G takes h6. Unfortunately for black, but fortunately for us, uh, he couldn't take on h4 because of this. And after this, you just have, uh, for example, queen h6 uh, with a great action, with a queen h7, with a queen h8. Uh, you threaten queen h4 because queen h3, queen e5 doesn't work due to the mating back rank on d8. In the game was g takes h6. He took on h6 and once again came up uh, with a crazy sacrifice on f7. After king f7, bishop e2, rook g5, rook h7, rook f1, took on g8, g7, and played queen f4. This game was played in Algeria back to 2015, and I really have to uh, emphasize the importance of this game because uh, theoretically it was very important. Uh, then uh, I want to just end this uh, lecture with probably a uh, way more important game for this system uh, played between Miladinovic and uh, Grandmaster from Bulgaria, Chatul Bashev. Both of these guys uh, are around 2600 and uh, it just shows a great, uh, you know, like uh, quality of this system for white because if 2600 GM cannot defend, I don't know what's going to happen in your games. So after like castles, he played bishop to d3, going after the h7 weakness. Probably this guy thought that after h6, everything is just cool. So get ready for something really crazy. Rook c4, chasing the queen away, and he took on h6. Of course, the d g6 has to be has to happen. And you know, this is one of those situations and systems where your opponent just tries to defend by your own pawn. So this pawn on h6 is at the same time. Uh, a great protector of the black king on g g7. So after queen c3, b5, uh, the game begins. Bishop takes g6. He threatens to take the queen on d5. Chatel Bashev plays b4, kicking this queen away and hoping to find a shelter for the queen on a5. Queen e1. Still, rook d5 is threatened. Queen a5. He now saved the queen. And wants to go after the a2 pawn. Looks like it's useless. Miladinovic played bishop e4, threatening rook and threatening queen g3, followed by queen g7 mate. The guy played king h8. He took the rook. This guy played bishop a6 and uh, tried to attack both rook and the bishop on a6. Uh, the real thing comes now once again. Rook d5. A typical uh, way of covering the defense of the e5 square. So in the case of uh, e takes d5, he would be able to uh, capture by queen e5. And after f6, queen, uh, queen e takes e7, followed by queen g7 mate. Chatel Bashev captured an a2. Miladinovic played check. And after f6, brought his queen back to g3, threatening queen g7. After rook g8, played rook g4. He's willing to exchange this rook in order to uh, eventually deliver checkmate on g7. After rook c8, the guy just played h7 and threatened rook g8 mate. What an amazing game and system. I call it Miladinovic attack. Many of you are going to call it Raptor attack. And it's basically called uh, Trumpovsky attack. Keep on enjoying in these variations and... I just wish you to have as many wins as I had in my bulletin blitz practice for the last 20 years. Thanks and see you later.